Okay. Fine. So let's uh, let's just continue with uh, one Corinthians twelve, right? Where we stopped. So, um, so Paul lists the um, gifts from eight to ten. Um, so there are nine which are listed here. We know that this is uh, not an exhaustive list in the sense, not the complete list, because we see you know uh, other gifts being uh, mentioned in Romans chapter twelve and so on, right? So, so we see uh, mm. the, the gifts of the spirit being listed here, and there are nine which are mentioned here. Um, so it says, uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healings working of miracles, and uh, then prophecy, discerning of spirits, gift of tongues, uh, sorry, different kinds of tongues, and uh, interpretation of tongues. So these are nine um, gifts that are listed there. <clears throat> and then it says that it's the, the one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he well, so it's it's one and the same spirit, you know. It's it's nothing. It's not anyone who's different. Um, it also means that uh, you know all these nine gifts. Okay, all these uh, nine gifts are what we can call as manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So this means that the Holy Spirit is making Himself manifest or visible and uh, clear and tangible. Okay, uh, making himself known in these in these ways, right? Um, and and all this we know: word of knowledge, what it accomplishes; word of wisdom, what it accomplishes; gifts of healings, what it accomplishes. So it's the Holy Spirit; He coming and uh, manifesting, like making Himself known in on these ways. The same Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, if if you see the the last. Um, part of verse 11 says distributing to each one individually as he wills so meaning that well, he gives he's the one who distributes in fact he he's the one who comes and so he's the one who manifests um, he's the one who who's resident within us so he's the one who manifests but but the thing is that he uh, he distributes as he wills which means it's his desire at the same time, we also know that we need to, you know, partner in uh, in pursuing, in uh, in expecting, in desiring. Okay, so that we see in chapter fourteen, where we read about how we are supposed to desire the spiritual gifts. So we we see that yes, he his he desires, and he chooses. He decides to manifest these gifts, uh, all these different kinds of gifts. But we as believers, we also need to play a part in expecting, desiring the, uh, the manifestation of these gifts. Okay. Then let's go on to chapter, uh, sorry, verse 12 onwards. So verse 12 onwards, he talks about, uh, Paul uh, talks about the, the body of Christ. Okay, the uh, is talking about each believer. You know what role they play in the body of Christ, what place they have in the body of Christ, and uh, you know, what is that function that they have in the body of Christ as a member of the body of Christ. You know what is it that uh, they uh, the you know what is the role that they have, uh, and he talks about a physical body. Right. He talks about the physical body, and then he talks. He draws a parallel and uh, and some lessons that we can learn. Right. So one Corinthians twelve onwards. So let's read. For as the body is one and has many members, but all members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm, a hand, I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? 
If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. Okay, so um, so Paul is saying, you know, this is this is it. There are you know uh, several things that we learned that there are different members, uh, and uh, but there is one body, right? And uh, so each member, you know, just because they are different in their functioning, okay. Uh, and he draws a parallel between the human body. In the human body, you have different members, different parts, and uh, you know the the foot does a different uh, uh, role. Uh, that is to balance the body, maybe to walk. The ear takes care of the hearing function to receive that input, auditory input. Uh, the eye takes care of the seeing, and so on. Right. So we have different. So he talks about the eye, the ear, the the hearing, the smelling, and so on. And then he says, you know. If the eye were, the eye cannot say to the rest of the members saying, you know, I, uh, you know, I only take care of the seeing and I'm not like the ear which takes care of the hearing. Therefore, I, you know, I'm disqualified to be part of this body because I'm not like the ear. Okay. So what is that? Every, every member has a different role, has a different function and, uh, and it need not be the same, right? So there's no point in comparing and because the person is different, because the gifting is different, uh, to disqualify oneself, okay, uh, it's more to do with the role and function, right? Uh, maybe because the role is different, you don't have to disqualify yourself. Okay, so that is what we see here. Um, from verse 20, 21 onwards, uh, he, he talks about a different thing, you know, uh, and the I cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the hand to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, these members of the body, sorry, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable part, parts have no need, but God composed the body, having given greater honor to that, that to that part which lacks it. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. And if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now, we, you are the body of Christ and members individually. Okay, so from, uh, from these verses, uh, that is verse 21 onwards, he's saying, you know, just because you are different. Now, first, you know, first few verses he said, um, because I'm different, I should not disqualify myself. Okay, the other thing is, you know, I compare myself to another person, another believer, and because he or she is different from me, or he or uh, her role or his role is different from me, I should not say you are disqualified, right? So I could not disqualify myself, and I cannot disqualify others and say you are no longer part of the body because, you know, your role is different or your gifting is different, right? And also the fact that if one member suffers, then all the members of the body suffer, just like in a physical body. You know, one member is affected, then definitely the entire the body is affected, right? So it says, uh, this is how it is. And also the fact that uh, we honor the unpresentable parts. The, the unpresentable parts have greater modesty. Um, and also, you know, the members that are weaker, um, we bestow greater honor and so on. Right, so uh, this is the truth of the physical body, and this is the truth of the spiritual body of Christ as well. Okay, verse twenty-seven. Now, you are members of Christ and members individually, and God has appointed these in the church: first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. 
are all apostles are all prophets are all teachers are all workers of miracles do all have gifts of healings do all speak with tongues do all interpret but earnestly desire the best gifts and yet i show you a more excellent way okay so here he talks about the ministry offices or god's appointments in the body of christ so he's talking about uh, you know uh, apostles and prophets um teachers uh, miracles gifts healings helps administration and he lists on all this uh, as god's appointments so he mentions you know these are appointed in the church like uh, 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 you know like a ministry office and the question is you know are all apostles the answer is obviously no are all apostles are all prophets or all teachers the answer is obviously no and do all have gifts of healings do all speak with tongues um and so here we here we understand that here he's talking about ministry appointments so these are appointed in the church by god okay so these are ministry offices these are ministry appointments um and in which all these this entire list is there so so this cannot be you know this should not be used to uh, you know to say that okay uh, uh, no, this person cannot speak in tongues or that person cannot have gifts of healings no we saw earlier that it, it is the holy spirit who manifests in all these ways and he is capable of manifesting and the gift of the spirit is given to all to each one for the profit of all okay so so that's something that we need to keep in mind so here he is talking about ministry appointments and then he says um, you know earnestly desire the best gifts again um, you know what are the best gifts the gifts that suit the occasion and the need okay there is a need to minister there is a occasion and which is because of the need okay the need could be healing the need could be encouragement the need could be uh, you know um, maybe uh, um, a miracle which is required a, a, a intervention a breakthrough right so he's saying earnestly desire the best gifts right what are what is the best gift for that occasion for that need that will take care of that need that will solve that desire the best gift right so and if you see it's not just one but it's it's many plural desire the best gifts so the purpose of the desire is not to just desire and keep desiring but god who's faithful will fulfill the desire so that we can learn to walk in it and be a blessing to people right so that it it benefits yeah the pro, it, it is for the profit of all it it is it benefiting the body of christ okay so um so it's very clear you know desire the best gifts again what is best is for the occasion he says best gifts which means plural it need not re be restricted to just one right uh, it can be many and then he says i show you a more excellent way okay a way by which one can minister a way by which one can um, take care of uh, uh, serving others in a in a more excellent way and he talks about love okay in chapter 13 he talks about um this uh, uh this aspect of love okay now uh, in chapter 12 before we go into chapter 13 in chapter 12 um you know again there is a, a reiteration of what we have learned before uh, about the gifts of the spirit about the membership gifts about the ministry gifts and so on so you can you know go revisit that go through that again go through that uh, go through the notes again so i'm talking about uh, page number you know 102 103 in the notes um so you can go through that and refresh uh, your memory about you know uh, the ministry offices uh, the ministry gifts the membership gifts and the gifts of the spirit and so on right um so we can do that okay now um so he's talking about the more excellent way some uh, an excellent uh, you know now 
the gifts of the spirit obviously ministering to people it's a manifestation of the spirit um and but he's saying you know i'm showing you a more excellent way another approach and in 1 corinthians 13 uh he talks about that so the, this is the context in which he's talking you know um there is a better way to minister to people he's implying and uh, um, and that is the way of love and it's um, and he goes on to say you know even if we exercise the gifts but do not have love then it's uh, you know it's it's not it's worthless right it's empty futile and even if there are you know greatest of charitable things that are done uh, you know even to the extent of a body you know you giving yourself to be martyred for the sake of something if there is not love then it is worthless okay so let's let's just read through the entire chapter uh, chapter 13 though i speak with tongues of men and of angels but have not love i have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal and though i have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though i have all faith so that i could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. For though I bestow all my gifts, all my goods, sorry, to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Okay, so he's talking about these, you know, situations where um, you have the gift of prophecy, you understand the mysteries, you have, you can discern things, you have faith to move mountains. Uh, but if you do not have love, then, you know, then it says, you know, I am nothing, first of all. Yeah, you know, if you're ministering in all these ways, but without love, then it amounts to nothing. Right? It benefits uh, no one. <clears throat> it, it, does not, it does not benefit you. It amounts to nothing. Okay. Um, then he goes on to talk about love. Now, what is this love that he's referring to? Okay, uh, we know that in the Bible we see different kinds of uh, words that are used to denote love. Uh, but this particular uh, words like you know filio or eros uh, and so on, storgi and so on. But this particular word, Greek word, is agape, which is um, which is the God kind of love, which is unconditional love, a love that is um, uh, does not depend on. A performance, you know, there's a love that does not say, um, uh, a love that actually says, I love you despite who you are or in spite of uh, the things that you do and who you are, right? So it's an in spite of love, not a because of love. It's a unconditional love. It's a God kind of love, agape. So uh, Paul goes on to talk about this, the quality of agape. Okay. So he's saying that, um, uh, love it, it suffers long or it's patient and it's kind. Uh, love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Right. So this is the quality of that God kind of love. Okay. So the thing is this, that the reason he's talking about this kind of love is because he's saying that, you know, if you minister, but if you don't have that love, then it amounts to nothing. So what he's implying is you, you want to, you know, you minister in the gifts, but you need to minister with this kind of love. And this love, God kind of love, has these qualities has these characteristics okay now what are those qualities is saying goes on to say love is patient and it is kind okay i'm looking at uh, page 108 in the notes right so saying love is patient and love is kind so which means that if you were to have this kind of love and you prophesy and you have faith to remove mountains and you give your body to be you know even to be burned or and you give the gifts i mean or you know your material possessions uh, you know in an act of generosity to people right now 
this kind of love needs to be part of that okay because he says love is patient and it is kind right so which means that when you're ministering to people when the gifts of the spirit are being manifested be kind and be patient <clears throat> right it does not mean that we don't have to be bold we don't have to be firm but he's saying you know be patient be kind right um then the second one uh, is uh, love is uh, love is patient love is kind love is not jealous it does not envy so again well um we definitely want uh, and desire the manifestation of the gifts but like we saw earlier there is no question of being envious or comparing ourselves with another another person whom god is using in a different way or a different kind of gift and there's no question of envying because with this kind of love we will not envy because love agape does not envy it's a god kind of love right so we we're not we will not we're not going to compare and say okay i wish i had that you know i envy that person Uh, i'm lot like that right so the hand does not say to the um, say to the foot you know i'm i'm you know you're able to walk you're able to support the body but you know uh, i'm I, i envy you the hand does not say that right uh, in the natural body the hand does not do that so um, the hand is required the hand is necessary important so also the foot so it does not is not jealous it does not envy right so therefore we should not uh, have these uh, have be jealous or be envious uh, in our ministering in the gifts okay the other thing is that love is not proud or arrogant or boastful okay it is, it is not puffed up it is uh, it does not parade itself uh, etc right it's not arrogant it's not proud it's uh, it's not boastful so which means that uh, in the again in the context of gifts um we acknowledge that it is the holy spirit he's the one who manifests he's the one who um does the supernatural works it is not ourselves therefore there's no reason for us to be proud there's no reason for us to be boastful and uh, you know for us to be arrogant right for us to be puffed up okay um so we need to be careful we need to make sure that we don't draw attention and focus and we don't elevate ourselves right but the focus is on god the focus is on the spirit of god who does these works and we give the glory back to god and make sure that the name of jesus is lifted up okay uh, well love is not uh, yeah it says love is not um, does not behave rudely does not seek its own it's not self seeking right um it uh, does not uh, is not provoked thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth okay so so all these things so when we uh, you know when we look at that we see that in our ministering we need we need to make sure that you know these kind of qualities are not there in the sense that we do not behave rudely that we don't seek our own uh you know comfort or our own uh benefit <clears throat> or uh, you know we don't get provoked we don't you know think evil we don't uh, you know uh, indulge in evil things we don't uh, indulge in sin and rejoice in iniquity and, and so on in our ministering right even in our <laughs> so sorry so we don't indulge in any of these things okay and then it says um love never fails verse 8 okay let's read that section love never fails whether there are prophecies they will fail whether there are tongues they will cease whether there is knowledge it will vanish away for we know in part and we prophesy in part but when that which is perfect has come then that which is in part will be done away with when i was a child i spoke as a child i understood as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away childish things for now we see in a mirror dimly but then face to face now i know in part but then i shall know just as i also am 
known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Okay. So, uh, so, so he's saying here that, um, you know, if, um, if there are prophecies, knowledge, everything, it, it will come to an end. Okay. The word used there is fails. You know, in the old English, is um, love never fails, meaning love never runs out or it, it is, does not become inefficient or it does not come to an end. There's no end to this love. Okay. So that's, that is what it means. You know? um, so whether there is prophecy, it says okay, it will come to an end. When there is uh, knowledge and prophecy and all these things, it, it will come to an end. And when does it come to an end? He's talking about a time when we see the Lord face to face. There will be no requirement of these things. You know, there will be no requirement requirement of prophecy. There will be no need for yeah, you know, uh, all these things, right? Um, uh, tongues and prophecy and all these things will come to an end, right? And uh, with regard to prophecy, he says, for you know, now we know in part. We don't know all the details. We know one part of it, and maybe it's just one word, and uh, we prophesy that. But then we shall know, as we ourselves are now known. And we know in part. We prophesy in part. But then, when that which is perfect has come. That which is in perf which is in part will be done away with. Okay, he's talking about a, a, a time when, yes, there will, the Lord we will see the Lord face to face, and at that time there will be no need for prophecy. There will be no need for tongues. There will be no need for any of these things. Okay, so it says that uh, it'll be done away with. Okay, so. Um, Verse 11, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I even thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Right. So we need to come to that. Uh, he's saying, you know, it's like uh, it, it, we are seeing things uh, not clearly. It's, we're seeing only in part right now, and uh, and even with regard to the gifts, it's it's just one part of it, right? Whether it's prophecy, or anything, we it's just one we know in part and we prophesy in part. Okay, but there will come a time when we will see the Lord face to face, and um, and when we do that, that which is in part, that which is dim. Or you know, it's 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 clear to some extent, but not all. That will be done away with, right? Um, and I shall know just as I also am. No, so we will have this very clear understanding, um, and we will know the Lord because we will see Him face to face. Um, and then verse thirteen. Now abide faith, hope, love. These three. But the greatest of these is love. Okay. With regard to faith, um, with regard to hope and love, yes, there is faith. We know, you know, uh, that uh, ex um, uh, we, we believe and that strong conviction and uh, the evidence of things that are not yet seen. We believe right now, and uh, hope. You know, there is that hopeful expectation of uh, uh, of of the future of uh, of a. Uh, uh, you know, a desired outcome, a positive outcome. You, you have that uh, in your heart, right? You have that desire. It's hope, and also uh, love. The greatest of these is love, because love, uh, it will not, it will not come to an end. Uh, there, there's no running out of it. Okay, it will always be efficient or effective. Okay, so um, the this teaching on love, again. Um, just want to reiterate that it's right there between um, chapters 12 and uh, 14. And it's there for a purpose because he's talking about the gifts. He started to talk about the gifts. He doesn't want us to be ignorant. Uh, he um, the, the teaching on love which with which 
we need to minister. Uh, the ministering or the manifestation of the gifts cannot be, uh, or if it is separated from the love of God, and if we as ministers, we don't manifest the love of God, we don't move in the love of God, we are not motivated the love, by the love of God, then it is worthless, right? And then what is this love of God? What is the quality of this love of God? Then he goes into details to say, you know, it is love is patient, it's kind, it's not proud, it's not self-seeking, and all those things. And goes on to say, love does not come to an end. Okay, love does not fail. It's not ineffective, it's not inefficient, it, it does not run its course, does not, you know, it's not limited. Right? does not have an end, it's limitless, it goes on. Um, and one of the things is, is that the very nature of God is love. God is love, right? So he is uh, he's omni, uh, he's infinite, you know, there's no limit. And at the same time, he is, uh, yeah, you know, he's eternal, right? Um, from the eternal past to the eternal future. So there is no end, so beginning and the end. So this is with the very nature of God. God is love, right? Um, and he goes on to talk about the fact that uh, when these gifts, they will come to an end. When we when we see Jesus face to face, there will be an end. There will be a wrapping up of all this. You, know, you don't need to prophesy anymore. You don't need to, you know, pray in tongues anymore, right? Um, because we will see Jesus face to face, and we will know him. You know, and uh, you know, I will be known. Uh, we will know him even as we are known by him, right? So, so that's the reason. Right? It's 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 not that he is downplaying the gifts, or he's saying that you know love is uh, definitely he's saying you know ministering with these gifts and ministering in love. You know he's saying that this is a more excellent way, but he's not in any way putting down the gifts. Okay, so how do we know that? Because he continues to talk about the gifts, specifically about tongues and uh, prophecy, right? he continues to talk about it uh, from chapter 14, right? So, um, so let's move on to that chapter, uh, chapter 14, okay? He continues on in chapter 14, and um, uh, yeah, so let's let's read through, right? Um, chapter 14 and verse, okay, before we go, any, any questions, uh, any doubts? Um, about chapter 13, about chapter 12, any doubts at all? I think, uh, you know, if you studied from the first year, you know, many times we've, you know, addressed this, right? Uh, over and over again. So, um, yeah. Okay, let's, uh, okay, let's go to chapter 14 then. Okay, so chapter 14, he's continuing uh, the 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 work of the spirit is continuing uh, to talk about gifts. Okay, now concerning spiritual gifts, that theme is continuing in chapter fourteen as well. Right, so chapter fourteen. Okay, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit. He speaks mysteries, but he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Okay, so um, so he's talking about uh, pursuing love, desiring spiritual gifts. So saying, you know, by all means, go after love, pursue love, pursue this God kind of love. Okay, go after, make sure that you you. You know, you attain it, right? So, so which means that um, uh, you know we need to develop this. Uh, so, one one beautiful thing is that Romans five five talks about um, the God kind of love. Let me just put that verse. I think you would have read it many times. Romans five and verse five. That um, uh, let's read that verse. 
Okay, Romans 5 and verse 5. It says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Okay, so the love of God. Okay, what were we talking about till now, chapter 13? It's again agape, the God kind of love. So here again, agape. Now the love of God has been poured, poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Okay, so uh, now that's the truth. If that is the truth, the Holy Spirit has come. He has poured out his love, the God kind of love in our hearts, um, which means that now that kind of love needs to be expressed. Right? Uh, it is there. It needs to go out. Right? It needs to go out and touch people. Uh, in our interaction with people, people who are difficult, people who are impossible, people who are, uh, you know, people who are uh, unlovable, right? Humanly unlovable, all kinds of people, right? People who let us down, people who, you know, all kinds of people. Uh, now, this God kind of love, which is in our spirit, needs to go out and find, needs to be expressed through our words, our actions, um, in our interactions, and it needs to touch the lives of people, right? So Paul is saying, you know, pursue love, go after this, go after this, make sure that this God kind of love, uh, you don't lose it or you don't, you know, lose sight of it, but let it be expressed, right? Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Okay. In that same line, the same breath, he's saying, desire spiritual gifts. So go after love, pursue love, and desire. Okay. Have a, be zealous uh, for spiritual gifts. Desire spiritual gifts. So again, here he uses the word plural gifts and not a singular, not restricted to one. Right. So it's many. So desire spiritual gifts. Why should I desire spiritual gift or gifts so that uh, the Holy Spirit might manifest himself through me in these gifts so that the people to whom the gifts are being manifested will be benefited. Very simple, right? So uh, Paul saying you desire these spiritual gifts. Yes, he distributes individually as he wills, but you desire the spiritual gifts earnestly um, desire the best gifts that is chapter 12 last verse right? 31 and again here chapter 14 verse 1 desire spiritual gifts okay and and he also um, says but especially that you may prophesy okay so when it comes to prophesy you know we uh, speak the heart and mind of god we are inspired uh, by the holy spirit and we, it is uh, what is prophecy we simply put it is god speaking to man through man right he gives a word he gives a instruction and uh, you know we either uh, communicate it or do it based on what that instruction is and that's in a simple manner that in a simple simply put that is that is what prophecy is what god speaking to man and through man so saying especially you desire spiritual gifts especially that you may prophesy and uh, he gives the reason why because uh when i speak in tongues when i pray in tongues i i am edified right uh, he says uh, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to god no one understands him but he speaks mysteries in the spirit um, he is speaking the mysteries what are what are these mysteries things that are hidden in order to be revealed to man right mysteries um you know uh, uh, deep things of god knowledge of god understanding of god revelation of god he speaks these mysteries things that i've not yet understood right these things are being uh, put in my spirit Right. Uh, he, however, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries, um, not for God's understanding, but for my understanding, because God understands and knows everything. But he who prophesies, what does that person do? He speaks edification 
and exhortation and comfort okay so edification is you know building up or uh, spiritual uh, uh, progress right so you're built up spiritually when there is prophecy when you minister in prophecy when you receive a prophecy so there is edification exhortation people are encouraged and when they know that okay god knows me god sees me god hears me and this is what god wants me to do okay and it it's the prophetic word is an encouraging word and also says um uh, it's a comforting word edification exhortation and comfort so that is what a person who prophesies brings into the environment brings in right uh, to the body okay so verse 4 he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself there is edification of a different nature when a person prays in tongues who's getting edified me personally if i'm praying in tongues whoever is praying in tongues he himself or her uh, herself gets edified built up spiritually strong in the spirit but he who prophesies edifies the church okay so when we speak the now word of god the prophetic word when that is released to the congregation now that when the people receive it they are edified so he who prophesies edifies the church okay uh, and then he says i wish you all spoke with tongues now this is my desire okay while comparing tongues and you know uh, prophecy he says i wish you all spoke with tongues now uh, which meant that there were some who were not yet uh, you know speaking in tongues so he says i wish you all spoke with tongues but even more that you prophesied Okay, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues. In what way? Because um, unless I, you know, here he's talking about a, about a message, right? Um, so unless I interpret, okay, give the meaning of what I, what I'm conveying in tongues, then the person who hears, like the people who hear. Um, they are not blessed i am blessed personally because i am edified um, but if uh, uh, there are others who are you know receiving that message they do not they are not edified okay so that is what he says uh, on corinthians 14 and um, yeah, verse 5 so um so in that sense the one who prophesies is is greater okay uh, because there is a is stronger or elder or you know that all those meanings are there um larger bigger right why because of the benefit okay but uh, the one who speaks in tongues um well it the 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 people do not receive uh, are, are not edified unless there is interpretation unless you know the gift of interpretation is there and um you're able to interpret uh, that message so here it's it's you're addressing so he's talking about addressing the congregation okay prophesying to the congregation um speaking to the congregation in tongues i saying you know um, uh, uh, so in that sense the one who speaks uh, a prophetic word and uh, is greater than the one who speaks in tongues to the uh, congregation okay Okay, so verse six. Um, okay, we have some time. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching? Even things without life, whether flute or harp, when they make a sound, unless they make a distinction in the sounds, how will it be known what is piped or played? for if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound who will prepare for battle so likewise you unless you utter by the tongue words easy to understand how will it be known what is spoken for you will be speaking into the air there are it may be so many kinds of languages in the world and none of them is without significance therefore if i do not know the meaning of the language i shall be a foreigner to him who speaks and he who speaks will be a foreigner to me 
even so you since you are zealous for spiritual gifts let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel therefore let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret for if i pray in a tongue my spirit prays but my understanding is unfruitful what is the conclusion then i will pray with the spirit and i will also pray with the understanding i will sing with the spirit and i will also sing with the understanding otherwise if you bless with the spirit how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks since he does not understand what you say for you indeed give thanks well but the other is not edifying i thank my god i speak with tongues more than you all yet in the church i would rather speak five words with my understanding that i may teach others also than 10000 words in a tongue okay so he is very clear right from chapter 14 and verse 5 um he is addressing this whole issue of speaking to the congregation in tongues um and so he says in verse 6 you know if i come and if i speak in tongues um if i give you know if i continue to speak in tongues how will it profit you how will it benefit you unless it is by revelation okay something that is revealed by the spirit something about scripture that is revealed and so i bring that revelation to you unless it is by knowledge okay uh, some uh, some understanding uh, about the word of god some understanding about god himself or uh, you know about a different aspect of uh, uh, of the spiritual walk with god you know by knowledge so revelation knowledge um and then he also says by prophesying okay how will it benefit you unless i come and you know speak to you and i prophesy um to you the now word of god then it will benefit you or by teaching right so i take time to teach you um the, the bring you from uh darkness to light from um ignorance to you know learning to a place of enlightenment so unless i bring these things you know it does not edify okay. and then he uh, gives a example you know if it's a flute or a harp unless it's a clear sound uh you know there is no distinction you know unless it's a distinct sound it will not uh, it's not clear or if it is a trumpet uh, you know if it makes an uncertain sound how will people prepare for battle you know typically talking about a trumpet that is used to alert uh, or um, you know a certain sound that is used by the uh, played on the trumpet um to prepare the ba- uh, troops for battle you know unless it makes a, a clear sound if it makes an uncertain sound no one will prepare therefore the words you speak are important okay the words you speak to the congregation are important right so if you're if you're uttering by the tongue words easy to understand they will understand it and uh, you know otherwise you can speak all you want but uh, you know you can give thanks all you want but the one who is receiving one who's hearing is not able to say amen to it you know is not able to agree to it and say so be it because he does not understand he's a foreigner he's like a foreigner who who does not know your language you're like a foreigner who does not know his language it is like that so uh, the person is not edified the person is not built up okay um so he says you know since you are zealous for spiritual gifts Okay, so we understand something about the Corinthian church that um, they they are they, they they were really zealous about the things of the spirit. Okay, uh, zealous meaning they were eager um, that they were um, very you know desire of uh, you know desirous of these things uh, and also uh, you know very aggressive in these things, right? So he's saying since you are zealous, let it be for the edification of the church. Okay? You think about this; it's good that you are zealous about these things. but let it be for the building up of the people who are with you the church that you seek to edify 
that you um, that you seek to excel in okay so so what is the solution let him who speaks in a tongue if you're giving a message in tongue to the to the church let him also pray that he may interpret so that will solve it right so you're speaking in tongue you're giving the interpretation the one who you know the people who are listening they understand they are able to say amen to what you're saying um, and they're able to uh, they are edified in the inner man right they are built up spiritually okay um so uh, and then paul says in verse 14 if i pray in tongue again you know he's talking about it um if i pray in tongue my spirit prays but my understanding is unfruitful even i don't understand right i don't i don't really understand what i'm praying because i'm praying in a tongue um, but what is the conclusion you know i will continue to pray with tongue but i will also pray with the understanding i will sing with tongues i will also i'm uh, sorry i'll sing with the tongues and i will also sing with the understanding so he uses the word with the spirit right i will pray with the spirit I will sing with the spirit. Okay, so um, so we conclude that he is referring to this praying with the spirit and uh, singing with the spirit to praying in tongues. Okay, um, so we'll continue this in our next class, and uh, we'll stop right here. Okay, All right, fine. God bless you. Have a great weekend. We'll uh, meet again in our next class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Bye. See you.